Much like members of a deluded cult, once the Washington establishment decides a scandal exists, no one can ever be convinced that it's bogus, all of it. Well, today, Democrats in Congress are demanding the appointment of a special counsel to investigate claims of Russian interference in the 2016 election, even though, as of tonight, no evidence of criminal interference has ever appeared, to put it clearly. Well, similarly, the Trump administration will not retract its claim that President Obama wiretapped the campaign, but also will not offer any evidence that it actually happened. Has fake news been joined by fake scandals? We're joined now by Fox News senior political analyst, Britt Hume. Hey, Britt. So, Hi, Tucker. So if you're able to kind of drown out all the noise surrounding this Russia story, what's it really about at its core? Well, step, yeah, this is fascinating in a way because if you step back, it, back from it a little bit and you look at all that's been generated here, which is to say, we, you know, we have a, a congressional investigation going on by the House Intelligence Committee and perhaps other committees as well. We have a an attorney general who has recused himself from any Justice Department investigations involving this matter. We have the calls now, as you just pointed out, for the appointment of a special prosecutor or a special counsel to carry out a supposedly independent investigation of this whole matter. And when you boil the whole matter down, it comes down to two parts. One is the Russians' attempt to interfere in the presidential, uh, the presidential campaign. There's really no evidence they interfered in the election itself, that is to say in the voting and right. the activities that take, that take place surrounding that. So, and I think there is some indication the Russians tried to influence the campaign, most conspicuously by John Podesta's emails that were hacked and then leaked to the public, most of which were embarrassing, but there's no real sign that they had any decisive effect on the campaign. And that's part of it. The other part of it is the notion that there was collusion between the Trump campaign, as you pointed out, and the Russians. There is, so far as I can see, absolutely no evidence to that effect. None whatever. Yes, there's evidence that there may have been some contacts between people associated with the Trump campaign in some way and Russian officials. No evidence that any of that was improper, inappropriate, or in any way related to campaign activities. So basically, we have an investigation which is rooted in something of which there is no evidence. Now, similarly, as you point out, uh, the president's claim made over the weekend in his tweets that, uh, that Obama uh, ordered him wiretapped or had him wiretapped, as he put it in one of his tweets, there's no evidence for that either. So we have this tremendous stir going on, and the media are really pressing very hard to right. get the, the Trump White House to answer for this claim that the, that the president made for which there appears to be no substantiation. In the meantime, of course, the media are merrily covering with very serious and sober faces this whole set of inquiries and so on that are going on into this possibility of collusion between the Trump campaign and the Russians, which, as I, of which, as I say, and as you pointed out, there is absolutely no evidence. It is That's kind right. of a remarkable feat of political alchemy by the, by the Democratic Party and its friends in the media to turn nothing into something. Well, and there are, of course, legitimate criticisms of how the administration has behaved. This just isn't one of them. But meanwhile, while the scandal may be imaginary, Russia is a real country with nuclear weapons and a population over 100 million. And it, you know, it's a player in the world, especially in Europe. What's the effect of all this on Russia, the actual place, and our relationship with it? Well, it, this seems to me to be, you know, kind of an irrelevancy that may become an obstacle in relations with Russia. It does right. seem to me, Tucker, pretty clear that part of the suspicion about this that has been raised, and that's all it is, is a suspicion, is rooted in the fact that President Trump had said during the campaign, and perhaps since as well, some rather kind things about Vladimir Putin and suggested more than once that he could establish a working relationship with Putin in which they, we would be allies in the fight against ISIS and perhaps in other things as well. That, that uh, proposition that there can be this alliance seems to be right. somewhat in tatters right now. You have the, his, his U.N. ambassador more than once has been very critical of Russia publicly, and as far as we know, with his approval. And he has said himself as well that he doesn't know whether he would be able to have a good relationship with Vladimir Putin. He thinks he might not be able to, but he thinks it would be good if he did. Well, all that right. seems at this point rather innocent to me. So the question then arises is how do we deal with Russia and the problems Russia causes in, around the world, and especially, as you note, in Europe? And that is, remains a wide open question, but that seems to be pretty much in the hands of people like Rex Tillerson and right. James Mattis and, and, uh, and, the, and the people at the CIA, Mike Pompeo and so on. So 
I don't think there's yet any reason to worry that there might be some inappropriately soft relationship between President Trump and Vladimir Putin. I don't think there's much of a relationship at all at this stage. Doesn't seem like there is. So really quickly, uh, to the wiretapping question, we know that people around Trump were surveilled by the U.S. government, Michael Flynn maybe among others. The president is in charge of the CIA. They're his employees. He's their supervisor. I don't, what, what prevents the White House from getting to the bottom of this fairly quickly and presenting the evidence? Well, any wire, t here's, here's a couple of things to remember about this. This strikes me that such wiretaps as there were were not related to some domestic investigation, but right. were, were a, a foreign policy matter, national security investigation. That requires a, a, a warrant from the so-called Foreign Intelligence uh, uh, Surveillance Act court, right. which has to look at the possibility that there's probable cause and then issue it. Such warrants are not to be issued except in the rarest of circumstances against right. uh, citizens of the United States, which does not, of course, preclude the possibility that in intercepting the phone calls, for example, of the Russian ambassador in Washington, that conversations with people close to Donald Trump might have occurred, as we believe we know they did in the case of General Flynn, who then proceeded to mislead the vice president about those conversations. The reason we know about them is there had to have been surveillance of the Russian ambassador at and, and Mr. Flynn, uh, General Flynn, caught up in that. So we know that that happened. We also know that there was probably a criminal leak of that information, which is right. why we know about it. Well, exactly. But all of this is... so. The, and the idea that a president uh, would be able to cause a wiretap to occur, which is legally not supposed to occur without the permission of a court, seems a touch far-fetched. And there's certainly no evidence that President Obama actually caused this to happen. Now, I know there are people who think that, you know, he gives a wink and a right. nod to the right people and nobody, and that these things would not go on without his knowledge. I don't think that's necessarily true. I think these kind of things can go, out with, go on without his knowledge, at least yep. up until the point when intelligence is obtained thereby, which is then presented to him in the form of an intelligence report. But these agencies operate not entirely on their own, obviously. He's responsible for all of them, and they're responsive to him. Right, but, but he's not. Autonomy. He's simply, I, I mean, I don't know of a case when a president has right. ever been known to have ordered a wiretap. Britt Hume, joining us live. Thanks a lot, Britt. Britt.